The inflation rate is actually rising again, and this is not good news, everybody. This could mean executive action this time, and from Biden and the other lawmakers in Congress. Actually, several lawmakers support $2,000 for stimulus checks, so hopefully this time they can get it done. Progressives in Congress are advocating for $2,000 payments, every month at least, until the crisis is over. More than 50 House Democrats, led by Representative Omar, sent a letter to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, urging their administration to go back on recurring direct cash payments. The group of lawmakers suggest that monthly payments be directed to those who need the most and will spend it the fastest. The letter also said, Many families can't afford to wait for eight months between payments, and to truly build back better, families have to have stability and certainty to through this ongoing relief. But some experts are pushing back on the idea of a monthly stimulus check, even though I totally disagree, because everybody needs a stimulus payment right now, and I mean everybody. Omar pointed to pilot programs in various places across the country that provided guaranteed income to some Americans. Omar said that the, the United States should become the top leader in measuring and safeguarding our people's economic well-being, saying her bill would actually be a start in that direction. The program, if the legislation were to pass, would not immediately begin sending out checks to most Americans. Instead, it would create a grant program, which the U.S. said will become a pilot program of guaranteed income across the country. The program will be studied from 2023 to 2027 to see if it actually works. And then the legislation will provide about $1,200 a month to people making seventy-five dollars a year. And now the head of households with an income of uh, $112,000 will receive $100, which will receive as well, as well at $1,200 of the program. And $600 will be provided for each child. And not only that, but inflation is coming down, it's cooling down in the United States. It remains a hot topic among many people. Some people say it's going up, some people say it's going down. But the next set of US CPI data for September is scheduled to be released this month. And so we'll see how this thing goes because from May, the inflation rose to 9% in June and later fell again in 8% in July. Many in the market were caught off guard when the US Consumer Price Index increased again by 8.3%, more than anticipated in August compared to a year earlier. The core PCE data the preferred inflation indicator of the Fed also topped expectations last week. The inflation numbers in August were not uh, subpar, thus leading the Fed to be remaining uh, more aggressive in its approach to dealing with inflation. And not only that, but overall, the Fed has hiked rates by 300 basis points in 2022. And according to economists, inflation could actually be slowing down more demand as it seems to be falling. Overall, demand in the economy is slowing, and while production is still facing many challenges, Unfiled orders continue to rise as the industrial sector continues to face supply chain disruptions and shortages in both material and supply. So everybody, hopefully President Biden can get the thing done and send out more stimulus payments this year. Because the existential threat to the planet is climate change. It's real. It's real. It's genuine. They want to get rid of that as well, I might add. I might add. They want to get rid of that as well, look, here's the bottom line, the is, when it actually comes time, when it actually comes time to do something about inflation around the kitchen table, the Republicans in Congress said no. They take control. They've said their first aim is to get rid of the Inflation Reduction Act. Inflation is going to go up, not down. You know, when you sit at that kitchen table I told you about paying your bills, well, what are necessities for the vast majority of families? prescription drugs. They lower prescription drug costs significantly. It lowers their cost of the family and inflation for the family is reduced. It goes on. It's the same way with what's in the Inflation Reduction Act has to do with your ability to be able to get tax credits for buying, if you need a new coffee machine, a new washer, a new refrigerator, you buy an efficient refrigerator, an efficient coffee machine, you get a tax credit for it. It costs you less money. It's estimated Average family will save $500 a year as well. And just that, there are also tax credits for weatherizing your home, put in new windows, and keep the door, a door that doesn't you know, leak the air and bring in the cold, etc. There's a lot that it lowers the everyday cost for middle class families to be able to make it. And look, I come from a wealthy state, the state of Delaware. Well, guess what? I've never been a big fan of trickle-down economy. Where if no, I'm serious. But, they, but by that, that's what we've been for the last 30 years, guys. That's what we've been. If the wealthy do well or trickles down, everybody does well. I'm a bubble up guy. 
first. When the middle class does well, when the middle class does well, working class people have a way up, and the wealthy do just fine. They do just fine. And by the way, the middle class built this country, and unions built the middle class. There was another blow delivered to the Biden administration with the release of a poor inflation report that showed consumer price growth spiked in May. The Labor Department's consumer price index rose a percent last month alone and 8.6% in the 12-month stretch ending in May. But Biden on Friday stressed that he is sympathetic to the impact of high inflation on families. During a press conference, Biden stated, I understand Americans are anxious and they're anxious for a good reason. Inflation is a real challenge to American families. What are your thoughts on this, everybody? Will President Biden finally do something for the American people and help people out with stimulus checks this year? So I believe that President Biden, everybody, can do more for the American people with stimulus checks. $700 stimulus payments have officially been approved by lawmakers. These checks will only be going out to a new targeted group of Americans, including those that are experiencing financial difficulties right now. More pressure is now on Congress to approve a fourth round of checks. Schumer is already proposing a new plan, and it was announced that the West Liberty City Council voted unanimously to move forward with a plan to distribute $700 stimulus checks to city residents that were previously excluded from the crisis relief. The plan would use $147,000 in local American Rescue Plan funding, which was allocated to states, cities, and counties to provide economic assistance for households negatively impacted by the crisis. A formal resolution is expected by June 20, 21st, and the two city councilors argued for larger checks of $1,400, saying they plan to continue advocating for bigger checks up to the formal resolution. Now, it is really great to see that some lawmakers are finally taking action for the American people. West Liberty will become the second city of Iowa and one of the few cities in the country to set up a direct payment program using a portion of its American Rescue Plan funding. The state of Maine has also started sending out stimulus checks. Maine sent out its initial wave of $5,000 checks and $3 each on June 1st, and intends to send 200,000 checks per week in the future. According to the Maine governor, the state's stimulus was signed to law as part of the state's budget surplus in late April. In a new announcement, the governor said the, budget, the budgets of so many hardworking Maine people have been stretched to the brink of inflation. And while we cannot control inflation or global markets, we can make sure that Maine people have what they need to grapple with these rising costs. Through hard work, Democrats, Republicans, and Independents come together to do what is right for the main people. I hope this will provide at least a measure of relief for people during these tough times. Now guys, I believe it's a good idea for President Biden to do this and send out more stimulus checks, for sure. If you guys agree, tell me in the comments down below. Too long, our nation's veterans have faced an absurd indignity. They enlisted to serve our country brought in good health and came back only to get sick from toxic exposure endured while in the line of duty. As many as three and a half million veterans have been affected by burn pits since 9-11. Yet approximately 80% of all disability claims connected to burn pits have been rejected by the VA. So many of our veterans have been fought by the VA after they fought for us they tried to get health care benefits. Many of them had to hire lawyers just to prove their illnesses and then make a complicated, do a complicated legal dance to show what everyone knew, that toxic exposure from burning was caused and caused all kinds of cancers and diseases. That was so, so indignant. The callousness forcing veterans who got sick as they were fighting for us because of exposure to these toxins to have to fight for years in the VA to get the benefits they deserved, well, that will soon be over, praise God. To these American heroes who have carried on without the benefits they deserve, I have one thing to say, no more. Today the Senate finally takes action to right this profound wrong. The PACT Act will finally change outdated rules at the VA that have been in effect for far too long that prevent our veterans from getting the care that they need. The care they need to treat the health complications that caused, caused by burn pits. It will expand eligibility for VA medical care to make sure veterans get the help they need. And there's even more good news in the PACT Act. It's not just about burn pits as important as they are. 
The PACT Act will expand coverage of health issues exacerbated by Agent Orange, which over the years I have strongly pushed for in this chamber. I want to give deep thanks to Senator Tester and Moran, who worked for months to push this bill over the finish line. Their leadership on this issue has been extraordinary. I want to thank my colleagues. This is another bipartisan action that is accomplishing something very significant. And I want to thank my colleagues from both sides of the aisle who supported the bill through its consideration. And most importantly, I want to thank the many veterans, the veteran service organizations, advocates like John Stewart and John Field, who never gave up on making this change happen. Because of their advocacy, our veterans will finally get the dignity and care they rightfully deserve. If you want to take the measure of any nation, look no further than the way it treats those who sacrificed everything in the line of duty. Today the Senate is making sure we treat our heroes the way our heroes deserve to be treated, with dignity, with gratitude for everything they've done to protect our way of life. Gone are the days when veterans will have to struggle to prove that they get to prove and fight to get benefits that they deserve. I thank my colleagues for their work and urge all of us to vote yes 